I go whatever I see, and at my own back door, I find a lot to interest me. Let's go and find some more, some more. Let's go and find some more. Snakes and bugs and rocks and leaves, games and songs galore. People and things and butterflies' wings. Let's go and find some more, some more. Let's go and find some more. And whoever you are, what? Use your curiosity. To find things is not hard, not hard. To find things is not hard. Hi. I'm the finder. Did you notice anything about all these uh, Philly doodles here that looked uh, like they had something in common? You know what I mean by in common? Well, let me give you an example. All human beings have heads. See, they all have something in common. All human beings have heads. Well, all these things have something in common. I'll tell you what it is. Can you guess? Here's a tin can, big old box down here, and some paper cups like you drink coffee out of or some kind of soft drink. Printing. Printing, that's what they have in common. All these things are built like that when they went through the hands of the printer. So when you hear song, you'll learn what's on my mind. Printing things by letter press. And that's a nice big fine, big fine. That's a nice big fine. Yeah, they all have printing on them. That's a tin can. It wasn't a round tin can like that, though, when it went through the hands of a printer. It was a big flat sheet of steel. And this type and these colors were lithographed on. Here's a stick of chewing gum. It has a label, you know? Well, that label went through the hands of a printer, too. And here's a, a toy. It's a cowboy riding on a real Mustang. If you make it go fast enough, sparks shoot out of here. That went through the hands of a printer, too. But this, like the tin can, was a flat sheet of steel when the printer had it in his hands. Look at this. There's a globe up here. So, well, what did a printer have to do with that? Well, globe is really printed on a flat sheet of paper and then assembled, put together on a round surface, on a spherical surface. But they're all printed on the flat paper. Here's the label of a phonograph record, a box that, uh, that just came in. And this kind of a label, you know what this is. This is the kind of they put around a tin can. You know, it's on paper. Pineapple juice. Batteries. Printed right on the zinc. Can you think of anything else that's been printed besides what we've been looking at here? We know printing is pretty important, don't we? Well, let's take a look at some other things. Look at all this stuff. Look at this. And this is just a little bit, really. Let's go back over here. I'll start over here where we got something real big and good looking. Piece of cherry pie. See this big sheet of paper? If you had 24 sheets, just like this, put them all together, with different things printed on them, like they make these great big 24-sheet posters, as they call them. You'd have a huge cherry pie there, and the name of the advertiser, and I don't know what all. And it would look delicious. we go riding by in the car, you know, look up there and say, boy, that pie looks good. Look down here. Look at the size of these letters. R, I, C. This is another piece of a 24-sheet poster, see? It says something else over here. And here's a piece of an eagle. Look at that eye. If you had 24 sheets, and if they were the right 24 sheets, you could put these together just like, uh, just like people put wallpaper up, you know? And you'd have a huge poster there with a big eagle on it flying along. When we go by on the street, we don't think that they're this big. But they are. Now let's take something small. Look at this thing. It's a book. Kate Greenaway's Alphabet. Printed by Edmund Evans Limited from the original wooden gravings. There you are. There's the ABCs. A. And there's a kid hanging on there like a jungle gym. And here's a little girl that looks like she's eating too many green apples. 
leaning up against the bee. And here's a little girl asleep in the bottom of the sea. The bottom of the sea, I mean this sea. Little tiny alphabet book, that's kind of an antique. Let's go over here. What do you think this is? Well, it's not paper. It's plastic. We've seen things printed on tin and everything, huh? Well, here's some printing, printing on plastic. See, the other side doesn't have anything on it. You can buy these things and hang them up in the kitchen or the living room. I guess you could even put them in a, wash them off with soap and water. Printing wouldn't come off. What's this, an old shirt? It's one of my old shirts. Say, what's a printer got to do with that, huh? Well, look, this is a print. This is just printed on there. It's a flannel shirt. But the other side, if you look at the other side, you'll see that this is just printed on one side. Some of the black came shining through, but the blue didn't. What do we got here? It's another piece of fabric. Really good and black on one side and kind of weak on the other. This is the right side. This is the side that was printed on. Look at the shirt I have on here. Have you got any design or pattern on your dress or shirt? This doesn't have any, see. But just the same. Probably wouldn't have been made if it hadn't been for a printer. Patterns. He printed the patterns that the shirt was made from. See? You've probably seen your mother working with these things when she makes skirts and blouses. And they come in a little envelope that was printed itself. The envelope has the pictures of the girls wearing the dresses and skirts on them that you can make from the, from the pattern. Let's get going along here. Here's a, here's a very good piece of cloth. This is either silk or nylon or something. Now on one side is a picture, uh, uh, not a picture, a map really, an Air Force map of Alaska. On the other side is a map of the Aleutian Islands. Now this didn't bleed through like that old shirt of mine. What's this? You know? You know what that is? A big roll of stuff. It's wallpaper. Sure, you even got printing on the walls of your house, inside your room. Down up here we have a uh, big old calendar for January 56. We all know calendars are printed. Music. There's a blow up of a sheet of music. Over here is a poster, like you see if you're. If you're uh, I'm going to take some trips, you know, go to France or Europe or something. You might look for posters to decide where to go. Christmas cards, Hanukkah cards. Over here, there's a dollar bill. That's printed. Down here, there's a little festoon of uh, two-cent stamps. They're printed. And this, no, that's not an old master. Not really, it isn't. It's a reproduction of an old master printed by our modern methods today. Look at this. Great big sheet of paper, big press sheet. You know what they are, don't you? That's pages, pages of a book. Look down here. Here's what it is. Walt Disney's Jiminy Cricket, firefighter. And maybe it's two books in one. Donald Duck, prize driver. All these pages are assembled and put together. You see some of them are upside down. But when they fold them all up and fold them all up and turn them around, Clip off the edges like that, bind them, you come up with a finished book. About like this. You probably all got books like this around the house. Maybe you gave one to your little brother or sister for Christmas, huh? And here's a cover. That's the cover of the book. I have some covers here, printed in a flat sheet like this. A lot of them on the same sheet. Donald Duck's toy train. Donald Duck in Disneyland. When they're cut out and put on these books, on the hard covers, this is what you finally w wind up with. All kinds of things. Animal books, bird books. What else? What else can you think it's printed? How about this? Newspapers. Newspapers and magazines, funny papers, comic books. Every kind of thing. Big pictures, little pictures, funny words, every day. Millions and millions and millions of words. You know, if you had some kind of a, if you could do this, of course you can't do this, but if you could stack up all the Saturday evening posts that are printed in one year, I think you'd get a stack about as big as the Empire State Building. Now this newspaper is printed by letterpress, and that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. There are three basic kinds of printing, but we're gonna talk about letterpress.
letterpress printing. Letterpress printing is probably the oldest kind there is. Like when a dinosaur comes stumbling out of an oozy old muddy swamp, you know, stepped on a flat white rock. That's letterpress printing. He printed his footprint. Have you ever printed your footprint? That's letterpress. Look at this. I've, I've made this to show you exactly what letterpress is, because it's one of the main kinds. Here's a plain piece of linoleum mounted up on a piece of plywood. Just a flat surface. But if you were to take a tool like this and dig on it, you'd be making something that you could print from. Look at this, for instance. We dug this out, see? Dug out all around here. Drew our letters on like we wanted to, to, to make it say something. So just for fun, I think I'll print that for you and see what, see what it says. The reason we call it letterpress is because it's raised from the background. This background is eaten away, and what we're going to print is the surface, the same surface that was sticking up here on the linoleum block. Let's ink this thing up and print it. Incidentally, this thing I'm using here is sometimes called a roller, but the real name for this thing is a brayer, like a mule, you know, a brayer. That's what a mule is. This is not spelled quite like that, but you can remember it that way. If you say you saw a man using a brayer, you might mean that you saw somebody driving a mule, huh? All right, I'm going to take a piece of paper. You could print this just by laying the paper down on it and giving it some pressure, you know? But let's print it in a, in a letter press. This is called a letter press right here. Okay, I'll put the paper down. Now lay the block on it. I'll probably smudge it. There it is, it didn't move. Get it centered under there. Right underneath this big old screw, because that's going to give us our pressure, see? Okay, give it a little pressure. Now if I had enough ink on there, we'll get a print. Do we get one or don't we? Yeah, we got one. Be a finder. That's my plug. You see this stuff in here? See all these funny lines in here? That's because I didn't dig deep enough, see? If you're ever going to do anything by this method, be sure you dig down deep enough. But you can take a print. And if you find you didn't dig deep enough, then you can go ahead and dig some more and make some more prints. And when it's just right, that's when you want to go ahead and make your run. That means make as many as you're going to make. It's called a run. What I like about this is that this demonstrates something very important. It demonstrates, probably, the way printing was invented. We think that the Chinese, over a thousand years ago, about 1,100 years ago, invented printing. And they did it just about like that. They took a wood block and they cut on it, cut the characters that they wanted to say. Maybe it said something like, don't walk on the grass. I don't know what it said, but they cut their characters on there. And then they could make just as many reproductions as they wanted to from that wood block, just the way we did. The trouble is, it always said the same thing. Don't walk on the grass. Don't walk on the grass. They wanted to say, come to my party. They had to take another block. Start all over again and cut it and say, come to my party. So some pretty smart cat up in Korea got tired of that business of cutting on the block, you know. So what do you think he did? Well, he thought to himself, if I cut those letters apart, and if I had, maybe he had a big old message there, see. He thought to himself, if I cut those letters apart, and if there were enough letters, enough characters, I could move them around and I could say, come to the party, and then next I could print some of those and then tear it down, and then he could say, uh, keep off the grass. He could say whatever he wanted. So look at these. And this development type wasn't found in Europe until about 400 years later by a man named, you know his name? Sure you do, Johann Gutenberg. 
Ever hear the Gutenberg Bible? Well, Johann Gutenberg was familiar with this kind of printing. You probably heard that he invented the printing press. Well, he did invent a printing press. And he invented one that looked very much like this. See? This is based on a principle of a big screw pushing down. And Gutenberg maybe looked at a wine press or an olive oil press, and he thought that'd be a good thing to push my blocks down with. Well, he too got tired of this business of cutting blocks, and so he, independent of the Koreans or of the Chinese, he invented movable type. Now, you can see that what that means, can't you? It means that when he had one page of setup, maybe of the Bible, if that's what he was setting, putting together, instead of having to cut a whole new page, he could make as many pages as he, as he wanted of page one, tear it to pieces, put it together again with the letters in different way like this, move them around, make different words, spaces, column after column, till he had it all set. Then he could print page two, and so on and so forth. Page three, page four, until he had an edition as big as he wanted. Well, you know, you still do this same kind of thing. The fact that Gutenberg invented movable type for us, developed it, affects us very much today. Because without that, we wouldn't know a lot of things that we know, see? Do you think that this method of uh, setting these little tiny pieces of type, you think that's the way they do a modern newspaper? No. They don't, not exactly. Let's go over here, I'll show you something. Here's a modern newspaper. Just think what a horrible job it would be if you had to have guys standing around and setting all this stuff by hand. Of course, that's the way they used to do it years and years ago. But look at our big city newspapers today. We've got a Sunday paper, maybe, with 60 pages in it. They don't set all that, those tiny things by picking up little pieces of type and putting them in. Look at this. That's what they do right there. You know what that is? That's page one. Page one, and here it is. Here's some people getting off an airplane. And here's Eisenhower, our president. Well, if you look at this great big thing, you'd find that this was Eisenhower over here. And you'd find that these were the people getting off the airplane. Now they're on the different side, you see. Here's Eisenhower, here's the plane. Because like we found out in that uh, linoleum block there, you reverse things when you print them going right from type to paper. Well, another thing that's strange about this is that it's all one piece. I thought we were just talking about it being so wonderful to have movable type. Here we are right back where the Chinese started again. Every time you print page one, it's going to say just what it says on there. How come? Well, I'll try to explain it to you. People who developed this plate, this great big curved plate that goes on a high-speed cylinder, of a rotary press. It goes around so fast you can hardly see the papers going by. You can't certainly read them when they're going by. They had kind of a marriage between the old Chinese method and Gutenberg's method. There's a thing called a linotype. Now, a linotype is really a trade name for a typesetting machine. There are other kinds, intertype, various other kinds of machines, but a linotype means they set type a line at a time. I'm going to show you some pieces here. These are pieces of linotype. These are called slugs. Of course, they're backwards. I'm not going to try to read them to you. It's a bunch of girls' names and addresses. Ah, uh, University City, I see that in here. 7239A. Well, this machine, the guy sits at a keyboard. And it kind of looks like a typewriter, see? He sits down and starts to hit the keys. And it sounds like the whole machine's falling down. Like this. And what's happening is that up, up at the top, in, in a case up there, there's all these letters, plenty of A's, plenty of E's, N's, all the letters you want from our alphabet, and all the periods and characters like commas, dashes, even rules, you know, that go between the columns. And those things up there are called mats. 
It's a matrix. It's a mold, a little mold made of brass. And as he punches the keys, these things fall down in the proper slot and come on down. And when he's got enough of them set, a line, that is, line of type, see, line of type. When he's got a line of type set, it says, I'm going to see my grandmother. When he's ready, he punches a button somewhere on that machine and you get hot metal like that right up against this mold. All these little molds that have been falling down there and compressed together. And zoop, you got a whole line of type right there. There it is. Not one piece at a time like poor old Gutenberg, you know. We still use that kind, though. It's called monotype. You know what monotype means? You know what a monoplane is? Monoplane has one wing. Well, monotype means set one piece at a time. So a line of type, they have a lot of them in a big, a big newspaper, and they work and work, and they get all this, all this stuff out, and they set up in forms, set up in square forms called chases. And they put the rules in, and they put the spacers in, and they put stuff around the outside to keep it tight, called furniture. And then they lock it in there so that it compresses all the type together so it can't get out, and they keep it on a flat table. And they move it along until they get to a place where they want to make a mold of that whole page, that whole flat page of type. They make a mold of it, and this is the mold. This is also called a mat, a mat. It's a matrix, too. It's made of paper wet, soggy paper, kind of like a blotter. Now, if you'd look at this, you'd see old Eisenhower here again. And here's the people getting off the plane, the same headline that you can see here. But in this case, you could actually read it. It says, Election Year Congress, the top line. How come? You can read it. Well, because you got it from some type that you couldn't read. You got it from reverse. You put the this wet paper down on the type that you couldn't read, and when you press it down, pick it up, of course you can read it, because you have essentially a print of it, see? You dig right into this paper. Well, then this will withstand heat. They put it on a certain kind of machine, and like that line of type, you know, when it got its hot metal, you get a lot more hot metal, this much. These things weigh about 40 pounds. And there you are, there's page one. Page one of a big city newspaper. And as many pages as there are to the newspaper, there are this many castings. Castings in type metal. But they can make as many as they want from this. If this one would break, make another page one. Make two more page ones. We broke two page ones. See how fast that is? Of course, they got a lot of men working on it. And they sure know what they're doing. Now, I'm going to give you an example of another kind of letterpress work, which goes with this, but you can't do it as fast. Well, you know, a newspaper, the paper's uh, of a certain quality, and they're to be read once, get the news out of them, throw them away, unless maybe your picture's in there or something like that, and then you cut that particular part out and save that, but you throw the rest of the newspaper away, or you wrap up fish in it or something. But how about a book? A good, fine book, you don't throw them away. So they take a little more pains with a book. You set the type the same way. Either line a type, that is, type all set in a line so that it's a solid slug, or else monotype that I mentioned before, meaning single pieces. But even that is done by machinery these days. A keyboard over here, that's a funny thing, let me tell you about that. Monotype. A guy sits at a keyboard, same as a line type, see, and he... What's he doing? He's punching holes in a piece of tape punching holes in a roll of tape. It's called a keyboard machine. What do they do with the tape? Well, when it's got its holes punched in it, in a certain order, they take that over and they put it on another thing called a casting machine. The casting machine, without anybody around it at all, except one fellow to make sure it's running good, you know, he just stands back and watches it. And this roll of perforated tape that the keyboard man made that sits over there like a player piano, if you've ever seen one of those old player pianos. And it casts up whatever he was setting over there. Maybe two blocks away, but it's casting it up. All right. <coughs> you take the material that comes from the typesetter, put it in the forms, the same as you did here for the newspaper, same, same way Gutenberg used to, lock it up. Send it to a man who's called an electrotyper. Well, the electrotyper makes something like this. But he makes it of plastic. 
Here, for instance, is a, a graph. Another graph down here and some type. Something about a wild onion. Well, here it is over here in this plastic mold. And the mold is serving the same purpose as this mat for the newspaper. When he's got this, he sprays it with silver and makes himself a copper shell by an electrolytic process. He has to put these things in a bath, makes himself a copper shell. It's pretty flimsy, but it's perfect. It's exactly like the type. It's perfect. He can make as many as he wants of them. When he's done that, he backs it up with heavy type metal, like this, see? And routes it out till he has exactly what was set. And he can print many, many, many copies from this. And he hasn't ruined the type. And he can make many, many of these mo uh, casts from the single mold. Oh, there's so many things to tell about this printing business. I think we're gonna have to come back and tell you about the second kind, which is just the opposite of this one. The second one is called gravure. And instead of printing from something that sticks up in relief from the background, like letterpress, we're gonna show you how you print from something that's dug out, dug out from, from the background, and you print from the lines. I'm gonna have to get my guitar, and it's over here. You be sure to try to see that next show, will you? So when you hear this little song, you'll learn what's on my mind. Funny papers from a copper plate. And that's the next big find, big find, and that's the next big find. But whoever you are and whatever you see, even in your own backyard, use your curiosity. To find things is not hard, not hard. To find things is not hard. Wherever I go, whatever I see, and at my own back door, I use my curiosity. Let's go and find some more, some more. Let's go and find some more. 